Hi there. Uh, hey. Got a minute to chat? You lied to me. Care to explain? Look, about before. I don't really have a good excuse. There's not much for kids to do around here. Mostly, I was just bored. Will you forgive me? Don't you have anything to say in your defense? Hey, I didn't know you'd turn out to be cool. How about we start over? All right, but you'd better not make me regret this. Pinky swear. So look, I've got an experiment I need help with. It's up on the freeway. You interested? Do you have any more details? Well, Murphy wasn't listening to me earlier, so let's just say it involves a hostage and some C4. You want to check it out with me? I'm always for hire if the price is right. Here, have some jet. And a box of walls when the job's done. We'll head out when you're ready. Strong not like this place. Hey, sweetie. So, what do you think? Pretty cool, huh? What's going on here? Blowing up cars is my favorite. I got tired of bugging Murphy about my mom, so a few of the ladies helped me out. We even rigged up a detonator. Ready to see all the parts go flying?
Let's skip the small talk and get to work. I like where your head's at. Go talk to the prisoner first. But don't kill him yet, okay? Hey there, friend. Preston Garvey, Commonwealth Minutemen. I know Preston Garvey. You aren't Preston Garvey. If that's really how you feel, that's straight up crazy. You calling me a liar? Maybe you made a mistake. I want to believe that. Any good gossip flying around? I've had word from a settlement that needs help. They're still hoping there are Minutemen out there somewhere. How did you end up in there? Have you heard of the Quincy Massacre? I was with Colonel Hollis's group. A mercenary group called the Gunners was attacking Quincy. I think you're confusing me with someone who gives a shit. What brought you out here? I prefer to keep my business to myself. Look, you know my situation. You ready to help out? I had a more direct solution in mind. What's that supposed to mean? Here, I'll show you. Hey, over here. Good idea, human. Hey, pal. So, how did it feel? Hey, it was fun. Anything else you need blown up? When I find something, you'll be the first to know. Anything else you want to take care of while we're here? I have some information you might want. If it's about Preston, I know that was Raina says there's at least one other imposter out there. But blowing them up made me feel better. And it wasn't really about the killing. What do you mean by that? It's about sending a message. I read that fear of death is even worse than death itself. So I recorded the execution onto a holotape. Someday, I'll make sure the real person gets a copy. I just want him to live in fear until someone can put him out of his misery. Who knows? Maybe it'll be you. If you say so. Anything else we're supposed to do here? Not that I know of. If it's all right, I'll keep tagging along with you for now. Is this hard?
Or is it just when you're a kid? Hey there. If you're ready to get started on the next phase, let me explain. Just point me to the action. I got a pal and good neighbor. Goes by the name Hancock. After what happened at University Point in Quincy, he's got some concerns about the next shoe to drop in downtown Boston. What do you mean? Every urban area has pressure points. Centers of gravity that hold a region's economy together. Take out the pressure points, and it inflicts a disproportionate amount of economic pain. Trade suffers, supply chains stop moving, and eventually people start going hungry. The fabric of society starts to crumble. The Institute knows this, so do the Gunners. It's not hard to guess what their next targets might be. Is Diamond City really in danger? It's not like there's raiders pounding on the gate. Maybe not raiders, but they got super mutant hordes right around the corner. And since have infiltrated their local government. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Diamond City isn't the settlement most in danger of fallen. Good neighbor is. Why do you say that? You mean, besides the elevated sniper perches surrounding the town, and the relative ease of blockading the entrance so no food or supplies can get in or out? Uh, yeah. Obviously. It's like this. If your settlement is poor, you can't afford adequate security. If your security stinks, your enemies eventually take notice, and sooner or later, they'll either demand tribute or conquer you. So, if you want your city not to get pillaged, you need a functional economy. It's hard to pull off when your clientele is primarily low-end chem addicts and drifters. There's no real money in catering to riffraff like that. For good neighbor to survive, it needs to attract a higher class of clientele. If you have a point, make it. Bottom line, Hancock wants to clean up good neighbor. Starting with the chem dealers selling drugs to kids, the thugs harassing visitors for protection money, the back alley murders, the gang activity, and the never-ending stream of aspiring scam artists. He wants all of them gone. Not detained, not bargained with, just gone. Makes sense to get rid of the trash. What's the catch? As mayor, he can't be officially connected to ordering hits on his constituency. So, he's contracted out certain jobs on the down low to a few people he trusts. That's where you come in. I need some details here. I have no idea what I'm getting into. There's three jobs I want you to start with. First job is to entrap an old ghoul who's been trying to rip off Hancock. Second one is to eliminate a trigger man gang infesting the town's warehouses. And a third task is to take out a few miscreants plaguing the local economy. You can do the jobs in any order you want. I've written down all the details on this holotape, including the local contacts to get started. Once the jobs are complete, cross them off your list and we'll move on to the next phase. And one more thing. You did us a solid with that gunner job. Anything we can help you with in return? My son, Sean, was kidnapped. I'm looking for help to find him. Man, sorry to hear that. Can you describe how he got kidnapped? We were in a vault when it happened. Vault 111. It, it was some kind of cryo facility. My wife was... murdered. She was trying to keep them from taking Sean and they... They just... Take your time. We're listening, of course. But details would be helpful. There was a man and a woman. They didn't say much, but I remember they called me the backup. The woman was dressed in, um, I think it was a kind of hazard suit. The man had some sort of metal brace on his arm. One of them came right up to me. Bald head, scar across his left eye. I'll never forget that voice. Low and rough like sandpaper across her face. You didn't happen to get a name, did you? No. 
They never said their names. Yeah, I kinda figured. So Vault 111 was a cryo facility? That's crazy. I headed up there once, but it was sealed shut. They had us cryogenically frozen in these pods, but something malfunctioned. The man who killed my wife, he had a handgun. I didn't get a clear look at it, but that sound. Rather traumatic, I suppose. So, no name, but the killer had a bald head, scar, gravelly voice, and likely a rep for doing shady jobs. Sounds a bit like a local merc named Kellogg. Somewhat nasty character. Rumor is he had a place in Diamond City, but there's something else. Please, tell me what you know. Fuck, this is a tough one. I shouldn't be sharing this, but it's your kid we're talking about. Look, check the desk in my room. There's a holotape in there. Might have some answers you're looking for. A holotape? What's on it? Tough to explain. You need to see it for yourself. But the gist is, back in Quincy, when Stella's mom was bleeding out in my arms, the last thing she told me was to pull a holotape out of a cargo pants pocket. Not the type of thing you expect to hear in someone's dying words. I asked her why, but didn't get an answer. She just whispered to show it to Stella when she was old enough. And just like that, she was gone. It took a while before I could bring myself to read what was on the tape. Part of me wishes I hadn't. I appreciate you telling me all of this. I know it's difficult. Just promise me that whatever happens, you don't mention a word of this to Stella. She doesn't know, and that's the way it's got to stay for now. Don't worry, I'll keep your secret. And hey, good luck out there.
Dog is good hunter. Let dog hunt alone. Human has strong now. Go kill Kellogg human. Sensors. Nothing more. Is someone present? Hostile sensor reading. Detected. Hostile sensor reading. Detected. Appears to be nothing. Perhaps my sensors need calibration.
This place can feel strong. Too much machine. Hostile sensor reading detected. The sensitivity of my sensors clearly needs adjustment. frozen TV dinner. Last time we met, you were cozying up to the peas and apple cobbler. Should not take junk. Less space for guns. Sorry, your house has been a wreck for 200 years, but I don't need a roommate. Leave. odds of making it to Diamond City. After that, figured the Commonwealth would chew you up like jerky.
Look, you're pissed off. I get it. I do. But whatever you hope to accomplish in here, it's not gonna go your way. Is someone present? because you fear death. You got guts and determination. It's admirable. But you are in over your head in ways you can't possibly comprehend. Just up ahead. My sins are standing down. Let's talk.
<clears throat> and there he is. Most resilient man in the Commonwealth. Funny. I thought I had that honor. Do we really need to do this the hard way? Start talking, or else. Fine. I guess you've earned that much. I'm just a puppet like you. My stage is a little bigger, that's all. Get to the point, if you have one. This whole setup in Diamond City was part of some elaborate plan of the old man's. It wasn't my idea to settle down with the kid in the middle of Diamond City. <laughs> I thought it was a terrible idea, actually. But it was one of the old man's pet projects, so here we were. Me and the kid, like a happy little family. I ended up kind of liking it. A reminder of what my life might have been if things had turned out differently. Where is my son? Where is Sean? Sean's a good kid. So maybe he's not quite a baby anymore, but he's doing great. Only, he's not here. He's with the people pulling the strings. Where he's safe and comfortable and loved. The place he calls home. The Institute. So where is it, huh? This Institute. How do I get there? <laughs> Haven't you been paying attention? You don't find the Institute. The Institute finds you. What's that supposed to mean? You open the closet. It's just a closet. You can never find the monster that hides inside. Not until it jumps out at you. Let's stop with the Philosophy 101. Get down to business. Right to it then, huh? Okay. Fine. I read your journal. I need to ask you something. Did you have a daughter? That's right. I don't remember much from that time. It all kind of blends together. Whatever made me think that a guy like me should have a daughter? No, I, I never deserved her. Not for one second. I was the worst thing that ever happened to her. You saved her life. Nothing matters as much as that does. Do you regret it? I'm a cold-hearted bastard for sure, but uh, I'm still human. I never knew what happened to her after I left. I didn't want to know. Not that. You want to find your daughter, right? What if I knew someone who could help you? If you're hoping for a happy reunion, ain't gonna happen. In another life, I probably would have been a good father. But here, in this terrible reality, you just don't get that chance. You don't sound happy. I think you'd regret it if you didn't try talking with her. People are always hoping for something better. They usually end up with something worse. The thing about happiness is, is you only know you had it when it's gone. I mean, you, you may think to yourself that you're happy, but uh, you don't really believe it. You focus on the petty bullshit or next job or whatever. It's only looking back by comparison with what comes after, that you really understand. That's what happiness felt like. I don't understand. I found your daughter. Aren't you curious? Not really. Don't worry about it. At least I know those Institute bastards will soon get what's coming to them. What do you mean by that? The eggheads never like taking orders from a dirty, contaminated degenerate like me. I could see only one way out. What are you offering, exactly? I do what people pay me to do. If I'm working for you, there's no more problem. From what I hear, you can afford me. All right, you can come with me. But you'd better not make me regret this. Okay, fine. So, you ready? Lock and load. Let's do this.
nice. What book say? Where to find milk of human kindness? Finding someone in the glowing sea wasn't going to be any picnic. I never expected an Institute egghead to give me so much trouble. Area patrol in progress. Just find it. There you are. Hold it. Take it nice and slow. No sudden moves. Why are you hiding? Why are you even here? What do you want? Don't toy with me. Look, I'm a reasonable man. The Institute wants that data, and you're gonna give it to us. I'm sorry, what? If I help you, you're going to do something for me. Then we do this the hard way. Ah! Leg damage. Ah! Mobility decreased. I... I... Look, I know I've made mistakes. Just... just leave me be. That's all I ask. That's the way you want to do it? Suit yourself. Critical arm injury sustained. Talk. Fine. Straw. Let's Open talk details. No okay. The primary insertion point for coursers is in the ruins of CIT, directly above the Institute. No kid. You need to build a device that will hijack the signal the Institute uses to teleport coursers. Came up with some schematics for you. You see, these are gonna work, right, Doc? The relay is the only way in and out of the Institute. Every courser has special hardware that gives them a direct connection to the relay in the Institute. It's embedded in a chip in their heads. You need that chip. But to get it, you'll have to find a courser. Don't worry about it. No. The relay causes some pretty heavy interference all across the EF spectrum. When you get to the ruins, tune into the lower end of the band and listen in. You'll be able to hear the interference. It's gonna be worth it, right? Follow the signal, and it'll lead you to a courser. Then, you just have to not get killed. I get it. But I think we've been talking long enough. Targets eliminated. Location secured. Let's go.